Hello, my name is Matt Parker. And I'm Leah Hudson. We're application and product engineers here at QA Technology, and we'll be discussing one of the most common questions we get from our customers. How long will my probes last? Well, as with many products, there is no simple answer. But we've put together some short videos to help explain the many factors that affect probe life. Our goal with these videos is to explain how to improve your probe's performance and longevity. We'll begin by looking at test applications, board manufacturing processes, test environment, board manufacturing materials, and fixture design. And then we'll discuss the importance of the right probe choices for your application and finish up with some advice on care and maintenance. It's no surprise that measurement sensitivity is a critical factor when considering probe performance. While a short or open test may not need precise measurements, a loaded board test may require greater precision. For example, test requiring high current requires probes manufactured from materials that can carry high amperage. Or, for targets with closer than average centers in high density areas, many of the test targets get placed on smaller center spacing. There are a variety of board manufacturing processes that play an important role in the ultimate cost of a test. It has become commonplace to use a no-clean process, which can leave everything from gummy residues to brittle contaminants affecting a probe's contact reliability. Careful selection of tip styles and spring forces must be considered when contacting these difficult test targets. No clean solder pastes are often exposed to very high temperatures, causing the flux residues on the board to vary in color from clear to amber. Also, flux residues can range from very hard to wet and gummy, depending on humidity levels in the manufacturing and test environments. These flux residues can slowly build up on the tips of the test probes from the printed circuit boards as they're being tested, causing false failures resulting in no defect found. The efforts to diagnose and retest boards with NDFs increases your company's total cost of test. When testing in extreme high or low temperatures for environmental testing, this can reduce the probe's cycle life significantly. In cold temperatures, the lubrication inside probes may thicken, preventing the plunger from returning to full height. In extreme heat, the lubrication and or the spring steel material may be compromised causing faster wear or springs to break prematurely. Matching the best probe and tip style to the materials and finishes of the test targets is critical for a reliable test and for extending probe life. For example, when dealing with organic solderability preservatives or OSP coating or lead-free processes, combination of steel tip material, razor style tip design, and higher spring force will extend the probe's life while ensuring consistent contact. The introduction of manufacturing processes which leave a difficult to probe coating or residues on the board can add complications for testing. For example, while organic solder preservative or OSP can protect boards from oxidation, the protective layer it lays down can cause significant yield problems at test. Because successful in-circuit testing requires a good contact between the test probe and the test target, traditional solder continues to provide the most reliable, highest yielding contact surface. Fixture design and construction will greatly affect a probe's performance. Probes that are out of alignment will quickly wear out. In fixtures designed for high volume testing, probes should always be mounted in their mating sockets to reduce the risk of side loading. Guide plates should be properly aligned to prevent excess wear on the side of the plunger or damage to the probe tip socket set height is also critical for probe performance and longevity. When set too low, the probe is understroked, reducing the contact force and the probe's ability to penetrate surface contaminants. When set too high, the probe is overstroked, resulting in spring fatigue or failure and potential damage to the UUT. Using the correct installation tool will avoid damage to the probe tip. A harder tool can cause the tips to deform or even break directly impacting the probe's effectiveness. Most of our springs are designed to be used at two-thirds stroke, commonly known as the working stroke. Using probes outside of their recommended working stroke will decrease first pass yields. Overstroking a probe will shorten the spring life or may damage the UUT. 
there are several factors to consider when selecting spring force in a vacuum fixture. Total collective probe force, condition of the contact surface, and distribution of the probes. Use our indicator probe to measure the deflection amount and ensure probes are operating with the correct working stroke in your fixture. Now we're going to discuss how to make the right probe choices for your application. We've seen how multiple variables play a part in probe effectiveness and longevity. That's why QA Technology offers a wide range of tube, spring, and tip options to ensure the best possible probe choice for a specific application, environment, manufacturing process, and test target. The probe tube is the most important factor dictating the resistance and current rating of a given test. QA offers five different material choices, ranging from an economical bareboard nickel silver tube to a high conductivity tube for high current applications. Choosing the right tube will yield the best results. QA springs are made of music wire or stainless steel and are designed for a maximum life cycle within a given force. Our high preload springs offer a higher and more consistent force during the first two-thirds actuation for better penetration and higher first pass yields. Choosing the right plunger tip material for the application is important to help balance cost, effectiveness, and durability. For low volume applications, beryllium copper is an efficient choice. Steel tips are harder and will remain sharper while contacting challenging targets such as OSP, no clean, and the like. We plate both types with hardened gold to eliminate surface oxides and ensure lower electrical resistance. As with any moving part, it's critical to lubricate sliding surfaces to maximize performance. Lubricated probes will have lower and more consistent electrical resistance and last longer. However, some applications, such as extreme low temperatures, require unlubricated probes. It's important to recognize that these probes wear more rapidly. The additional friction can also cause higher electrical resistance, leaving particles inside the probe and potentially causing stroke failures. Selecting the right tip style and size for the target is possibly the most critical of all the choices you'll make. Although QA's razor tips are especially effective for OSPs, the sharper probe tips and greater spring force required to penetrate the coating can accelerate probe wear. For this reason, when OSP is necessary, we suggest adding solder paste with a pin-testable flux to the test pads and vias wherever possible. We strongly recommend looking beyond the potential manufacturing cost savings offered by any one particular board finishing process and examine total cost of the entire process. Manufacturing cost savings can easily be wiped out by increased test costs and lower yields. An extremely effective method for maximizing probe life is to select a socketless design. Socketless probes deliver the same performance as conventional ICT probes, but offer additional benefits. You can use larger, more robust probes on smaller centers. The larger size means better pointing accuracy and less side loading. And you have a larger spring force and tip style selection. Good maintenance begins with careful storage. Leave probes in their original packaging to protect them from damage. Storing probes in bins or drawers will help keep them labeled and organized. Clean probe tips remove lint, fibers, flux, and other contaminants by gently brushing the probe tips with QA's natural fiber brush and vacuum away the dislodged particles. Never use cleaning solvents. They will wash away the internal lubrication and potentially cause debris to wash inside the internal workings of the probe, resulting in reduced performance or shorter life. Diagnosing contact problems as they arise and replacing test probes one at a time is more expensive than replacing probes on regular intervals. A practical maintenance program for fixtures can save considerable time and money at the production level. Testing becomes more reliable, reducing the chance of false failures and lost rework expense. Use cycle counters on test fixtures to help establish a maintenance program, whether it be cleaning the probe tips or replacing after a predetermined number of cycles. Developing a program requires some tracking to determine the average life of the probes in a particular application. Some applications call for replacement as often as every few thousand cycles, while probes in clean environments or applications with wide electrical tolerances can last far longer. Probe wear is inevitable. 
Knowing when to replace a probe will keep production downtime to a minimum. A few signs that a probe needs replacing are sliding wear on the plunger's shank, tip wear, and buildup of contaminants that cannot be cleaned. Recognizing these and replacing your probes at the right time makes testing more reliable, reducing the chance of false failures and lost rework expense. Better test yields and reduced downtime are the rewards for keeping fixtures and probes in top condition. So, how long should my probes last? We've explained many important factors affecting probe life and explained what you can do to maximize your probe's performance. It's important to match the probe to the application, improve the test environment and process, use the correct tip style for the test target, and perform regular probe maintenance. We hope you found this video informative and useful. To help you solve your test challenges, check out the Resource Center on our website or call us for more information.